And we're live. Welcome to another edition of the Industry Insider, your promotional products podcast where you can get all the nerdy news you need to know about. My name is Jeff Franklin, National Accounts Manager with Headwear USA. I'm joined today by three other lovely folks. But before we get to them, why don't we tell you a little bit about our sponsor for today, Tervis. All right. Tervis has been around since 1946 and is celebrating 75 years in business, starting with their classic line. All right. They've got sleek styles made, uh, make, make them perfect for the active and on the go lifestyle. Tervis is the original double wall insulated drinkware that keeps cold drinks cold and reduces condensation. Backed by a made for life guarantee, Tervis is the original customizable double wall insulated drinkware that keeps hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold. Available in several sizes, including a 16-ounce mug, a 16- or 24-ounce uh, tumbler, and a 24-ounce water bottle. Made from Triton plastic, made in America, lifetime warranty, dishwasher, and microwave safe, and they're BPA-free. So be sure to check them out at tervispromos.com. You will not be sorry that you did. Uh, so why don't we start off with uh, Meg Erber with SNS Activewear. How are you doing today, Meg? I'm doing great, Jeff. How are you? I'm glad to hear it. Thank you for asking how I'm doing. It's, it's yeah. so nice of you. Did you I'm, like, doing, I'm doing great as well. Yeah. So at least we know what you would look like bald now. <laughs> I know. I'm kind of digging it, actually. I mean, I you actually- You don't have to be afraid when I, it happens. I kind, of went, I, I kind of went that direction a little bit. <laughs> and if you don't know what we're talking about, it was the hype video. I used a refacing app to superimpose our faces onto some fun people. Stevens was spot on. <laughs> It, it actually made me feel young again, Meg, because, you know, I, 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 over the, over the last five or 10 years, I've traded quite a bit of muscle in for fat and, uh, <laughs> oh yes. And then you were, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Like you, you made me Vin Diesel. Diesel. So I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I really appreciated you guys picking like really cool characters for yourselves. Um, mini and, I, and you know, e, come on. And, uh, you forgot about the mini me part. I was like, <laughs> I is that cause I'm short, Meg? Is that, is that, is that cause I'm short? <laughs> So that's Stephen Stephen McFadden with Perfect Promotions and more, also known as uh, Mini Me or Doctor Evil. Let's go with Doctor Evil for the just. I mean, I guess it's the better. Fair <laughs> enough. It was awesome. It was how, are, how are you doing, Stephen? I'm doing well. Good. I'm Glad in to shock. Hear Glad to hear <laughs> from the video. You shook. <laughs> Well, listen, we're also joined today by uh, an amazing, amazing guest. Uh, super excited about today's conversation. We're going to talk about divergent thinking, outside of the box thinking for us plebes and laymans. Um, but ultimately, uh, Sarah Webb is the, uh, the master of said topic. And so we're going we're gonna to have her uh, school us all, basically. But uh, first and foremost, Sarah, uh, as we like to do here with our special guests, we like to open the floor for three to four minutes and allow you to tell us all things about Sarah Webb, uh, whether it's your, your Dallas Georgia history or if it's uh, you know anything else. A uh, little inside joke, but hey, how you got started with the promo industry and what you've been up to since is always a great place. So and I only have three to four minutes. I mean, I've been, I'm ancient. I'm ancient in here, you guys. So I've been in business for over 20 years. I literally was 12 when I started. 12. Wow. Yeah, 12. That's how old me and Meg act. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely 12. I uh, started in the industry. I was with another distributorship and I had the pleasure of being trained under Janelle Nevins which is why the teal is here. I was part of the Nevins Marketing Group. And when I started in tandem, I asked if I could carry the teal with me every single day, which is why our logo is teal. But I started as an assistant account executive, learned all the things, worked under two really great salespeople who taught me the creative side as well as the dollar and cents side of this business. So you need both. I started in a time where they had fax machines. I literally had like a fax machine on my desk. I know I'm totally dating myself. And we would overnight camera ready artwork. So that was actually a thing back then. And since then I started in tandem in 2013. Uh, we started literally in my house, uh, a totally different side story, had programs out of my basement. I do live in Dallas, Georgia. So out in the sticks y'all, there's, there's no Uber delivery there. like. None of that stuff happens out there. And so we would drive to the post office <laughs> daily to <laughs> ship out our products. I know, I know, it's crazy. Um, to a 5,000 square foot building, then to a 15,000 square foot building, and we continue to grow and, and build. So luckily, to my husband's excitement, I no longer have programs in my basement. We can actually use our basement. <laughs> and um, here we are. Has he turned it into a man cave yet, though? So true story, we have completely redone the basement uh, during the pandemic. It took us longer to build out the basement than it did our house. And yes, it does have man cave room with 
like the draw down projector TV. Um, now I can't get furniture. I, I, I don't know what's happening. I can't get furniture. I can't get all sorts of things, but I can't get furniture right now. So we're having spend the nights on the floor. Fair enough. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you're saying you can't get furniture because of the shortage? Is that the issue? Yes. Uh, so from what I understand, petroleum is a thing um, that we're short on among every other excuse or um, shortage that we have right now. So yes, it's overseas. It's on a boat. It's sitting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Either that or somebody's using my uh, layback movie theater. <laughs> it's both. It's probably <laughs> sitting on the cargo ship outside of Longport, California. Yeah. And they're sitting in your recliner, just yeah, like, chilling. Like, Do you want to pay me? I'll enjoy my yeah. time here. <laughs> I <Yeah>. would. <laughs> I got a great article I'll send you actually about that. Uh, pretty cool. But yeah, so listen, like I said, outside of the box thinking is what we're talking about today and really where that all originated from. And if anybody's listened to the show in the past, uh, you know, I'm actually living a little bit of a dream right now. Because like I said, oh, one of the people right. that, uh, that I said that I wanted to meet uh, in the industry that I hadn't met yet was I said Sarah Webb. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm living a dream guys, but uh, ultimately and diesel. So, I mean, it's been win. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> we're both living dreams. <laughs> you didn't have mini me on your list. I'm just curious. That wasn't no. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Evil. I mean, I do do this. <laughs> I, lo I love the, I love the no while she's shaking her head. No, but then she said, yes, uh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Completely mixed signals there. Uh, no, but uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I was very drawn to what you guys did at Expo East or Expo Direct to You, sorry. And um, what, you know, basically there was a, uh, the PPB Newslink article that went out and that's where, uh, where I had heard about it. And we talked about it literally that day uh, on our show. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the thinking that I love. I'm very magnetized to that kind of thing. There's very few people in this industry or really even in, in the world uh, that I have uh, come to know that think like that, uh, you know, so simply and, you know, really just make lemonade out of lemons. You know, it's a sort of a shitty situation that you took and turned into a really uh, the, the best possible scenario. Right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? What, how your experience at direct to you, uh, how you decided to, you know, rather than take folks from the office and, and do it that way and to do what you guys ended up doing, take, take us down that road. So, as you all know, PPAI Las Vegas is huge and it's really where you get so many genius ideas. It sets my tone, it sets my year. I get hyped up, I get energized. Um, we connect with our team, we connect with our partners and not having that, I was scared, honestly. I, I didn't know what our year was gonna look like, how we were gonna find product. It, everything is sight and touch and hear and listen. and and really having that full 360 experience with the product and just soaking it up. So I knew that we had to do something and it turned into such a great opportunity because every year we can't bring our entire sales team. It's just too expensive. It's not cost advantageous, getting all the flights and all the things organized. And so this was a great opportunity to bring everybody from our company on the sales side to have one kumbaya moment brainstorm and you know through this pandemic and tandem has been fortunate enough to be to remain open the entire time our offices have not closed we are in individual offices we've we've been safe we've been doing the things that we're supposed to do so you know staying six feet apart and sanitizing and all the things but we're a family we've been together through this and um so it wasn't we weren't operating from a place of fear when we decided to take the expo externally and create it as something where we could feed off of each other. Cause that's really what Vegas does for me is I feed off of you. I feed off of my team. Um, and so we were trying to just come up with a way to recreate it. And it turned out to be amazing. So we had our own rooms. Um, we were able to have indoor and outdoor space. We had it up on a big screen TV. We brought food in, we stayed in our pajamas, our SNS box of crap. Uh, a little yeah. right there for you. I, we, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we had, we had a great time, you know, we were able to brainstorm and talk about the product together. Um, even though it was not the most ideal situation, we had a great time doing it. So just so you know, we, we were actually planning on getting those exact same boxer craft pajamas and wearing them on the show today, but it didn't happen. 
to the last minute and I just couldn't make, I couldn't connect the dots. That's I was like, yes, we know. We loved it. So it that was, was like, the, it was, right. And that's what we, we saw. I was like, this is team building, whether you realize it or not, you're, you're providing an opportunity for this camaraderie for this, you know, you, you guys are all just going to hang out together now where as before, even where you said it, you couldn't, you know, I don't say afford, that's not the right word, but it's just so expensive to take all of your salespeople. And now you have that opportunity. And at first I was like, I don't even know if I would want to do that. But then I saw the pictures and I was like, I want to be part of that team. Mm -hmm. That looked like so much fun. So yeah, yeah. props, props on that. So how, how many folks did you guys have um, participating? Eight of us that were there. Awesome. So, and it was great. Like we, we were, they had a jacuzzi, they had fire pit, they had, I mean, it was great. So, you know, we spent the day doing what we needed to do and then enjoyed the afternoon and the evenings together. So it was a lot of fun. Was this an Airbnb that you rented? So there's this place called uh, Reynolds Plantation. Uh, it's between South, South Carolina and Georgia, and they have these beautiful homes there. And so, yes, we did rent through like an Airbnb type. Wow. That's really awesome. Now, um, did you guys set up, I'm, I'm assuming you guys set up like meetings and stuff, uh, like with certain, like with suppliers to kind of do what you would normally do in Vegas as well. And then I'll come into a room and like have it on television. Did you guys do stuff like that or have any events to with that as well? Any, anything that you guys did? Yes. So in between, we did have timed meetings and I think some of the, the partners, they were like all out of sorts because it would be <laughs> logging in, but then we were all in the living room. So they're like, where's Sarah? Where's Katie? Where's Portia? You know? And so we're like, we're all here. We're here. You know, they can't <laughs> I didn't see that. And so, you know, that was one of the challenges that we had was, you know, they were doing the points thing. And so then the team was like, I need more points this time. So I'm going to log in. <laughs> so did a, a little bit of juggling in between that and then and then we did get a little bit of pushback because you know they didn't see all of our team coming in but we were all there so um you know we did have to have some additional conversations about it but once they realized what we were actually doing they they were excited to, to help and then yeah we did have like the chat conversations and our projects that we were working on and what was cool too was you know normally I go into the booth and I think about certain projects that I'm working on mm. so as the team going into the booth they're thinking about their own projects, but then we would hear each other's projects. So then we'd go into another room or another, yeah, another room. Mm -hmm. And we would say, somebody else was looking, somebody else would show a different product. And all of a sudden we were like, oh, Portia, this is like the coolest thing. You need to do this for so-and-so. And so mm. like our brains were exploding. We were pretty exhausted after. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. That's so really there's so many different directions that I could take this because I know you guys almost made it like your own little sweet show, right? Like an EME of your own to, to some degree, because you're there as a team going through it as a team and you're having those one-on-one -on -one meetings or going through those supplier partners as a team. So really awesome. But uh, really what, what I think I likened it to the most is if there's any like NHL fans, you know, any hockey fans that are listening, like when you're watching, uh, you know, the, the, um, the Stanley cup playoffs <clears throat> and the home team that happens to be away like those cities typically set up this ginormous screen and have like these huge watch parties like outside during the stanley cup and uh so that's kind of what i felt like you know you guys were doing you were pulling together your team and doing the whole thing because you couldn't actually be there you know what i mean so i just thought it was super cool what um what other type of uh you know outside of the box thinking things have you done in the past to sort of lend to I guess employee engagement and and that sort of stuff? Because I know we sort of talked about that before. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that the pandemic brought to the forefront of of to me is that, you know, fear visits us strong and it stays with the weak. And I keep saying that over and over again to myself. Um, but then to my friends and family, because, you know, if you live in that place of fear and you, it's like a stopgap, it stops your brain from being able to think about the next two or three steps. And so when the pandemic happened, yes, I was, I was just as afraid as everyone. Um, and I, uh, a, a lot of you that know me know that I am a type A personality. I close off this period between December and January. And that's when I'm planning out my year. And I'm serious about it. Like I have my calendar, nobody's allowed to talk to me. Like, don't call me. This is my time where I take care of like my brain and get me ready for the year. 
And like any plan, I know that things are going to change and shift, but at least I go into the year very, very focused and diligent and I have the things laid out. Well, 2020 happened and that's not a thing. Like I had to throw it all out. And as I was um, sharing, like I felt after I threw it out, I did have a cry. I'm not going to lie. Like I had my little dumpster fire and I had my tear jerk and, and my alcohol and all the things, but <laughs> there was this moment of, okay, now what, you know, that pause where I could do anything and nobody was going to say anything. Like I have complete freedom to screw all of this up and guess what? It's okay. It's 2020. Like nobody's going to say anything. And it was in that moment that I realized how rigid I had become in my own little box and how I, I can still do anything I want to. It's 2021 and I can still do whatever I want to. Um, and so that epiphany really helped get us through the pandemic. So one of the things that we did that I'm really, really proud of is when, when everything shut down and we realized that we were going virtual and everything was going to be on Zoom and on video, we realized how many of our clients we're not client facing. So what does that mean? That means that they're not wearing the apparel. They don't have branded merchandise. They're going to be on these calls. So in tandem sent out catalogs to our clients with apparel and said, hey, pick your top three favorites. And we had a range. We had outerwear, we had t-shirts, we had um, polos, we had sweatshirts, whatever the case was. And it was across the board and they could each pick three different items. And the response we got was tremendous. What that also did is we have in-house embroidery. So that kept our embroidery team occupied, embroidering, testing, trying out different fabrics that maybe corporate America wasn't purchasing. What it also did was ensure that all of our clients had branded merchandise that they were wearing on the Zoom calls. Then they had their executive team going, wait, where'd you get that? Hey, I didn't know you had that. So all of a sudden I had all of these logos that were digitized. They had product out in the field. Our name and our brand was out there. And we haven't stopped. And that's what's been so cool about just making that shift. And I think one of the lessons that I've learned is that you really have to understand your client first. It's all fine and good to plan what you're gonna do as a company. You know, everybody's like, what's your corporate plan? And what is this? And what's your five-year vision and blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean anything if you don't know who your client is. And so understanding what they're going through and meeting them at their space and then creating your value journey as a company from that <laughs> is really what's gonna make the impact. So how did how did that affect, like that whole mindset that you had, the epiphany, how did that affect your planning session between Jan, uh, December and January of 2020 into 2021, since things are so different? How do you plan for what you don't know how to expect? Yeah, so um, so I'm not gonna lie. I, um, I got through 2020 and I was exhausted. You know, my brain never stopped. I didn't know what I was doing. Everything was broken. I'm fixing all of these things. I'm learning all these things. Um, and so one of the things that we always do that I always do is have what I call my someday list. So this is all the things that I wanna get to someday. So whether it's new process guides or new social media, whatever the case may be. So we kept moving through all this, having that momentum. Well, we got through all of these things. We redid all of our onboarding. We, I mean, new hiring process, new hiring documents, videos, all of this stuff. So now it's 2020. It's the week between, right before 2021. And I shut everything down. And I think I had an emotional breakdown. It was that, okay, I've made it through. The need for masks, the need for the PPE, the need for all of these things is going to start decreasing. That's not going to be a thing. And yes, people are still having virtual events. And yes, we're still going to be shipping out and doing warehousing and fulfillment. But what we knew is not coming back in 2021. And I was one of those people, and I'm somewhat embarrassed to say this, but I swear to you, so March 13th was our D-Day. That was when everything shut down. And then I literally swore like word in stone the whole nine yards that we were going to be back 100 percent in uh, after spring break like this is not a thing everybody's crazy i'm not crazy i got this you know but it didn't happen that way i'm guilty of that too <laughs> i was pushing 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 so um you know all of a sudden to your point 2021 happened and 
um, I was at this place where I, I just couldn't see. I couldn't see. And every year I've been able to see. I can see the future. I know what I need to do. I know what markets I'm going to into. I know what shows we're investing in. I know I couldn't see that. And January was very, very hard, hard for me emotionally, mentally. Um, and so, you know, going away with the team helped. But at the same time, it's also still a letdown because I'm not, it's not what I'm used to. It's not how I could prepare. So one of the things that I am a huge proponent of is when in doubt, train it out. So I, I learn all the things all the time. So every year I have both a personal goal and a professional goal. Um, and it's training um, something, a new skill, a new activity. And I've done everything from learning golf, which I think I'm going to have to learn it again because I haven't played it in a year. Um, but learning golf, uh, ballroom dancing, pottery. Um, this past year, I learned how to ride a road bike. Y'all, I know that they say just it's as easy as getting on a bike. No, you have to clip your shoes in and literally figure out how to unclip them. And I am that person. I'm so embarrassed to tell you all this. So don't tell anybody else. So <laughs> don't I'm, worry. It's just my mom listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm driving my bike or driving, riding, riding my bike and pedal pedal. And we come to this intersection and I could not unclip. Thank God the car was stopped. And I'm like, hey, I'm coming. I, I, I could not unclip fast enough. So that is actually a skill that I have to still learn, but true story. But, you know, Jeff, to your point, I had to learn these things and it's, it's making those connections is what has brought me out. It brought me out of my mental state. Um, one of the things that we're doing right now is I'm going through 120 hours of digital marketing classes. So not many people are going to do this. And it helps me connect dots that I didn't see. I have a master's, I have an undergraduate, I'm really smart. Digital marketing was not anything that I had learned about or trained for or understood. I mean, I know how to post a picture on Instagram, but I don't know anything about SEO and really understanding these things and you know, learning from uh, how to be a better leader, learning HR things that I didn't know about. That's really what has can, helped me to continue to move forward and, and get out of my mental state. Yeah, I'm clicking so much with everything that you're saying. And it's, it's weird because I, I don't know if everybody can, can pick that up, but I do the exact same thing that you do, uh, maybe slightly different. But it'd be, that last week of the year between Christmas and New Year's, I always take off. No, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm yeah. not working, but I take that time off and I, I plan out at minimum the first six months of the year. Typically, I'll do the whole year. And then the first three to six months is pretty rigid. Um, and I know exactly what you're saying. We rolled into December and January of this year. And that's why I asked, I'm hoping maybe you could share a nugget or two with me because I was the same way. I was just, I, like you said, I think it was a perfect analogy. You just couldn't, I couldn't see. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think I've struggled a little bit this first quarter because of that. Um, but ultimately, you know, things are still good, sun shining, light at the end of the tunnel and all that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to say that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely clicking with what you're saying. Meg, Steve, I'm sure you guys have plenty of stuff to ask. So I'm going to shut up now and let you guys ask a well, question. I just wanted to say one thing about the road bike. That's hilarious because I got a, an office bike and still hurt myself with the pedals because the Peloton directions say kick out of it. Well, don't ever kick out of it because you kick out hard enough, the whole bike will go over. And I literally skinned my entire shin. I just left my shoes on the bike and I'm like, I can't. And then I had PTSD from it. Like I didn't even get on it again for like two weeks. <laughs> Um, I did get on and then everybody and their mother sent me videos or told me how to do it. And I did it. So now I, I I've done it twice. You kick out now. I, I want to see, the, I want to see the video okay. of you uh, kicking out. And yeah, talk. Well, there wasn't a video of me <laughs> kicking out. There was a video of how I hurt myself afterward, obviously. And I'm like, man, I'm literally 12 years old, but uh, yeah, go ahead, Steven. I'll let you hop in. You've been sitting there so patiently. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I was, Wait, I was just listening. I was listening. No, I, I, and I, I love the idea. I mean, I, there's, there's so much about what you said. That's, that's awesome. And, and motivational in a lot of ways as well too, you know, always continuing to improve yourself and improve your company. And, and I think that we can take a lot from that. And I think out of that comes the, the creative thinking, you know, I think that's as you continue to learn new skills and, um, see how people are doing things differently. We, we bridge the gaps between our industry and, and other industries and other marketing fields. And, you know, we can take a lot from how, you know, big corporations do these retreats and they do these training sessions and we can, you know, bring it in, you know, bring it into the promo world. And, um, you know, the, the clear example, obviously of the direct to you, which you guys did um, was such a, 
amazing example of that. And I think you guys are going to going to be better off for that going into the year, whether or not you have a plan or not. I think people are going to be so excited and, and have that energy. Um, you know, we, we struggle with that as well. You know, like we weren't exactly thrilled about the direct to you option. Right. And I think there was a lot of energy like that out there. And so we, we put our efforts into a new office. So like, we just kind of went a whole different direction. We're like, Hey, these are things that we've been wanting to do. So let's take time as a team and, and do that. And, and so we've been excited about that, but it's anything to get your team excited is it's huge. You know, it's, it's so, it's been so difficult to do and so hard to come together. So I think we can take a lot from, from that example. Well, I think, okay. you know, one of the things that, uh, that we've all learned too, is that proximity is power. So mm. we've realized how important it is to be close to each other and having those opportunities to connect both emotionally and mentally and physically. And so mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we did was we always have two open houses every year. And one of the ways that we had to also transition that was what were we going to do in the fall? We knew that there was a need. We were trying to you know, figure out how do we get in touch with clients and how do we show them what we're doing, but then also doing it in a safe way. And so uh, Catherine Brewer, actually with ETS, she had the idea of doing a picnic in the park. So in August of 2020, we did a picnic in the park. Now, usually all of our open houses are very much themed. It's usually about alcohol. So like we're at a distillery or we're at a brewery or anything, you know, fun. Um, so it was a little bit different doing it in a, like a pavilion. It was a very nice pavilion, but it was in a pavilion. And, um, you know, there were families walking by and kids and we had like outdoor games going and the kids were playing with outdoor games and you know, the, the partners were there and they had, everybody was masked and we were giving masks out and they were able to see and touch the product. And I think even just doing something um, to your point and just keeping moving it forward and, and reinventing some of the things that you've done is what's going to keep us all moving forward for sure. Very cool. You guys have any other questions? Meg, you were going to say something, right? I know. I get like, I've had like 17 questions that, or things to say. And then I'm just like, listen to the story. And then by the time she's done, I'm like, oh, I don't remember what I was going to, I don't remember what I was going to ask. Um, I was even going to write it down. I'm like, I, write it down. I don't know if yeah. you saw me looking around. So I, I'm sure it'll come to me. I've done that like, a couple times. <laughs> squirrels. I know. Um, oh, I remember the well, last thing I was going to say, because we all did it. Uh, have you tried goat yoga with the team? Like as a fun... <laughs> <laughs> oh, true story. Um, there's this place called um, Goat Goat Vineyard. And so you can go to this winery, a dancing goat, dancing goat. And so you go to this winery and they have goats and they do do goat. They do do, they do do goat <laughs> yoga there. And so that is something that we're going to do on the list for sure. I think that's fun. It's a, it's a fun team building exercise. <laughs> but again, like you said, there's alcohol involved because it's a, you said it's at a vineyard. Winery, that's, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Vineyard. Perfect. <laughs> Relaxing. You've got some yoga, some wine. It's all, that's, it's all good. <laughs> that's the only way you're going to get me to do yoga too, unless you, uh, unless you peg me to do it on the show live, like with, like what's happened before, you know, that's <laughs> scary. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, yeah, well, put, put, say there's alcohol there and I'm there. <laughs> So, all right. Do you guys have any other questions or do you want to go uh, into, into rapid fire? Yeah, let's go into rapid fire. All right. Well, first, let me just give a shout out to Tim Hill and to John Cudahy because they both chimed in on uh, Facebook. And if they're still listening, hello, guys. How are you? Um, can't wait to see everybody's smiling faces again in person. Uh, all right. Rapid fire. Why don't we, why don't we uh, pick on Stephen first? Uh, Stephen, what, what is your rapid fire question? Uh... <laughs> I had one and I didn't write it down like Meg that who couldn't write down stuff earlier. Um, so I'll just go with favorite sports playoff. Um, I'll say NHL. Yeah. NHL has to be. No. <laughs> they're, they're down in Georgia. They even have hockey in Georgia. <laughs> I was like, what's hockey? We live in the. Go ahead, Sarah. Tell them. So, okay, well, I'm, I'm definitely a Braves fan. I don't know. Um, I was on 680 The Fan, which is the Braves radio station. I know, mm -hmm. very exciting. So for sure, the Braves, and they totally got dissed. I really want to say that I'm a Falcons fan, but you can't really say that in Georgia. Um, and for sure, for sure, we have the best soccer team in the nation. So for sure, it's got to be soccer. 
soccer playoffs. Yeah. Hmm. And my kid, and my kid plays uh, varsity soccer. Can I do a plug? Yeah, uh, sure. So, I mean, it's got to be soccer. And the World Cup, World Cup, yeah, the World Cup is World, projected. Ooh, to be that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah. World Cup is really good, actually. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. But for an annual event, I'd have to say hockey. No. <laughs> I'm going to go NFL. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Meg Herbert, what is your right. question? So since we are in like, you know, March Madness, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of shift and do merch madness. All right. So I think the one of the, you saw that merch madness on Twitter going on that ASI put out, it was, it was really fun. And the last, it was down to like t-shirts and hats. And then there was another one before we went to the final play, like the final, you know, Stanley cup, whatever. So, I mean, I obviously know what Jeff's going to say. So, but uh, Sarah, t-shirt or hat, like who, like, what do you think would be the better giveaway? Like the best one seed? Yeah, the one seed, yeah. Sarah, I'm judging you. I know. I and know. I'm judging you, Sarah. <laughs> Maybe you sell both, so be quiet. I sell both, so it's okay. <laughs> you want me to go first? Yeah, sure, Steven. go first. Shirt. Yeah. Wrong answer. Everyone wears a shirt. Everyone wears, well. <laughs> I mean, or everyone. Not everyone wears Most pants, everyone wears a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll get Sarah's answer first before right. I interject. I totally have. Oh, no yeah. she's she, i could see it i could see it too she typed in chat something different I see <laughs> no that's not true i don't i don't have a chat oh it, it was probably to you directly yeah all right listen it's definitely a hat and here's why okay hats hats and shirts both have the same number of impressions 3400 impressions per item okay second tie for second only behind outerwear but outerwear is seasonal so you know get rid of that stuff and it's more expensive all right the reason why you would want to pick a hat over a t-shirt is again same number of impressions but the retail perceived value you get on a hat is much higher than it is on a t-shirt you know hats retail for anywhere from 30 to 50 dollars a t-shirt's going to retail for 20 to 25 bucks and in our industry you know a shirt and a hat's going to cost around the same so uh you get that instant boost in retail perceived value from the investment Wow, TED Talks by Jeff. That was yeah, amazing. You know, I learned something. I'm the first time you've asked pitch. me about hats in like 105 <laughs> episodes. So yeah, I, I just let it all out there. Ah. Well, I will have to say that I would go with the t-shirt because I could go on the same ROI, but I will tell you also who won and it was hats. So hats, and then I guess it was like drinkware and something else. And I think drinkware won. So uh, I don't know who win, win against drinkware, but I would go for the hats over the drinkware. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a really good segue into our sponsor, but you know, we're not quite ready yet. I think I have a question and Sarah's got a question. <laughs> so hold that thought. <laughs> All right. So my question, uh, I wanted to ask you something alcohol related because it came up so much recently uh, or on this episode, but I'm going to stick with my original question since you're from Georgia. All right. Uh, sweetened or unsweetened? Oh, sweetened. Are you kidding me? And not this stuff that you guys do up north where it's like, I'm going to pour in a couple packets of sugar. No, no, no. That is not sweet tea, y'all. That is, that's not sweet tea. It has to be cooked. You cook the tea, you cook it, and then you do the liquid. And uh, that's all I'm saying about that. So yes, sweet tea. She's like, bless your hearts. Bless your heart. <laughs> Don't even try it. Especially when I go up north and they're like, sweet tea? Do you want peach? No, I don't want peach tea. I need sweet tea with sugar. Sugar. Oh. Not Splenda, not sweet and low. Sugar. Just saying. We what if you fire? What if, what if you cook the tea with peaches and you infuse it with that peach flavor? No, that no, not that's not either. And there's something here that us true Southerners know, which is called sun tea. Oh yeah. If you're oh yeah. Gallon. <laughs> Use milk gallon. Clean it out first. You put your tea bags in it and you lay it out in the sun. I've done that. Okay. Yep, I love it. That's the best way. See. Uh -huh. I use honey. Okay. Don't kill me. You no. say sunny, sunny D. Is that what you said? That's kidding. <laughs> so I'll just go since I kind of butt in on that. Um, unsweetened, but then with I add honey afterward. I'm sorry, Sarah. I am not from the South. I am from South Jersey. Close, but not enough. <laughs> not far South enough. Not far South. I do call it the dirty South because there's a joke in New Jersey. They're like, what exit? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm in, I'm like the dirty South. <laughs> I <get> that. <laughs> I'm yeah. a no, t no tea. What? Really? She's like, really? No. Yeah. No. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm apologizing. I don't like tea. <laughs> you're in North Carolina. I don't know if that's even allowed. Yeah, 
yes. Uh, like saying that she, he doesn't like barbecue. I don't know. No, what? I like barbecue. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just calm down. Calm down, everyone. Calm down. Corn on the cob. Let's just, go. Just Please. not a fan of fan of it. Just I've tried a bunch of different times, and I just Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A, sweet tea. Come on. I've tried it. Just oh, like that's some thing. good lemonade. Chick Fil A. They have good up. lemonade. So are yes. they? Are they? Are they against like the Arnold Palmer down in the dojo? Like. No, now they do some serious Arnold Palmers down here. Yeah, that's my jam. Sweet tea with sweet. Oh. I'll, take it. I'll take it. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Now we can actually take my question and blend it with the alcohol question. <laughs> we can we can spike that Arnold Palmer. Yeah. There we mm. go. That's, that's my answer. Spiked again. Arnold Palmers. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah. All, right, All right, Sarah. What's your what's question? You Okay, so since I am super big on social media right now and all things digital, house <sighs> or not to Clubhouse? We just had Tim Hill on. Uh, oh, Clubhouse. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I actually Clubhouse every morning um, with Tim and Michelle Hill. And then last night I was brought into a Merch Madness um, Clubhouse with Charity and Javier and Mandy Clay. And it was ugh, just listening to Charity. I, I she's grown so much since i've met her i love listening to her so i am pro clubhouse i wasn't at first i was like yeah i don't have time but it was fun oh, yes <laughs> all right sarah i guess i guess i have to ask you then um because you haven't had any strikes against you yet but uh i guess if you're asking a question that means you are an apple device user I am an Apple device user. Oh, and Jeff still lives in 1994. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All things Mac. Meg, how do you like two-year-old technology? Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Joe right. Hoffman. Uh, so I, I don't have a, actually have any, uh, you know, user experience to go off of, but everything I've heard, I would definitely be pro Clubhouse. You should jump in. So I, I am in. I'm in the... I followed you, right? I think I followed you yesterday. I'm I'm in the learning phase, so I'm get your learning. party hat on. Yes, I do have a party hat. I'm a big partier. Party. <laughs> that means you've been at like I think the party hat goes to new people up until like a week or so, something yeah. like that, a week or two. Yeah. So <laughs> then we know, you know, you're the newbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm learning. All, I'm learning all the things. It's it's very interesting. And it then. Is. All the different ways to track it and um and that's really where i start geeking out on is how do you track it and monitor it and all of that stuff but yes the content's really great awesome, that's awesome. <laughs> all right well look since we were you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go back now i'm gonna backpedal uh on on my uh on my my office bike meg i'm backpedaling okay we're uh we're gonna, we're gonna go back to your merch madness question all right and talk about drinkware for a hot second all right of course, it's Tervis, right? Like when you're talking drinkware, you instantly think Tervis. All right, so Tervis added stainless to their well-established line about two years ago uh, with the goal of being better than the competition by utilizing state-of-the-art custom 360-degree UV printing. And they're available in four different sizes, 12, 20, 30, or 24-ounce water bottle as well, and now 24, 30, or 40-ounce wide mouth bottles. Uh, they've got a five-year warranty, 18-8 copper lined, vacuum insulated. They'll keep your drinks hot for eight hours. They'll keep your drinks cold for 24. Um, you know, you got to love it when you, you, you know, leave a little bit of a uh, little bit of your drink left in the bottom of the cup and the next day the ice is still in there. It's pretty cool. So anyhow, if you want to learn more about that, uh, or anything Tervis or drinkware related, go check them out at tervispromos.com. You will not be sorry that you did. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Uh, Sarah, I really appreciate you being on. It was, uh, it was awesome. Thank you, uh, Meg has one more question. I remembered. <laughs> I know, squirrel. Um, so when you were doing the PPI direct to you, did you, and this is a segue kind of into next week's show, did you happen to go into the showdown booth by any chance? And it's okay if you didn't, because we're, we're going to have them on next week because apparently it was like amazing. So I wanted to see if you had gone into it or not. It was. And actually, uh, in Tandem Promotions, another plug is part of the buying group, the partnering group. And so we're doing a special one-on-one -on -one so that all of our partnering group members are able to see it as well, because it's phenomenal. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to set up a meeting with them, um, how it clicks and goes through and you can go to the catalog and, and I mean, talking about all of the things digital and the capabilities to really feel that experience without mm -hmm. having to be there, even when you know, our, our rep is Bo Turner, who I love, he can't bring all the things and it gave such a great opportunity to 
to walk through, to click, to view, to brainstorm. So yes, I am super excited and we'll definitely be tuning in. Awesome. Yeah. Who, Stephen, who is it next week coming in from Stephen Walsh? Awesome. Super excited. So yeah, we'll get the lowdown and hopefully maybe we'll have a showdown booth hype video or something. <laughs> maybe they'll find us in the video or in the booth. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what Photoshop skills I can come up with. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, listen, guys, that concludes the show. Sarah, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate you being on. Looking forward to working with you. And uh, guys, we'll, we'll see you next week, right? Maybe. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>